thank you to all of you for availing yourselves for this uh, press briefing. It's going to be brief, and I stand here to address you as the media and all the people of our country. Two days ago on Friday, the 19th of July, the Public Protector released a report on an investigation into allegations that I, as President, violated the Executive Ethics Code as well as the Constitution. Since then, many South Africans have been calling, tweeting, and sending messages expressing concern about the findings and their implications for their country. I have decided that it is necessary that I should, as president, make a statement on the issue to address these concerns and reaffirm that the work that I was elected to do as president will continue as usual. So there should be no concern about the work of government. When I assumed office as President of the Republic in February last year, I undertook to work with all South Africans in bringing a decisive end to state capture, to turn the tide on corruption, and to restore the, the integrity as well as the credibility of our public institutions. Since then, as a country, we have made remarkable progress on many fronts. We have taken decisive measures to halt the abuse of public bodies for private gain. The Zondo Commission and the PIC Commission continue with their work. We are continuing to strengthen institutions like the National Prosecuting Authority, the South African Police Service, the Special Investigating Unit, the State Security Agency, and the South African Revenue Service. All these institutions had been negatively affected by what happened in the past, and the work to strengthen them and to restore them is ongoing. This work must continue, and it must be intensified if we are to rid our country of all forms of corruption and criminality. This requires, amongst other things, that we respect and strengthen and defend the institutions that have been established by our Constitution to support democracy and to safeguard the rights of our people. I must say categorically that the public protector is one such institution. It carries a constitutional responsibility to investigate any allegations of improper conduct in state affairs or public administration, as well as having the power to take remedial action. It is essential that the public protector enjoys the confidence of South Africans that that office, office acts impartially without prejudice or favor and that it is an office that is above reproach. It is essential that the public protector acts independently within the law and according to our constitution. As I indicated on Friday, 19th July, the public protector released a report in which she concluded that I violated the Executive Code of Ethics and the Constitution. The findings of the public protector that she has made against me are very serious. They allege conduct that cannot and should not be taken lightly by anyone in our country. It should be a matter of concern for all South Africans that an office such as that of the public protector should make findings 
of such a nature against the head of state. It is therefore essential, as it should be in all investigations, that such findings are based on fact, that they have a sound legal basis, that they are rational, and that they have been arrived at through a fair, impartial, and lawful process. Unfortunately, the report released by the public protector falls short and fails to satisfy all these crucial requirements. After careful study, I have concluded that the report is fundamentally and irretrievably flawed. This is strongly confirmed by my legal representatives who have equally studied the public protector's report very thoroughly. The report contains numerous factual inaccuracies of a material nature. The findings we have found are wrong in law, are irrational, and in some instances exceed the scope of the powers of the public protector. Furthermore, in failing to provide me with an opportunity to comment on the proposed remedial action, the public protector has violated the provisions of the Public Protector Act, the Constitution, and the principles of our common law. Now, given these deficiencies, and consistent with our constitutional architecture, it is appropriate that the courts of our country make a final and impartial determination on this matter. I have therefore decided to seek an urgent judicial review of the Public Protector's report, its findings, and its remedial action. I have instructed my legal representatives to prepare an application to this effect as a matter of urgency. And given the gravity of this matter and appreciating the effect that these findings have on the standing and the credibility of both the president and the public protector, it is essential that the courts be given an opportunity to review the report and make a finding accordingly. I have decided to take this action not only to protect the rights that the Constitution affords me as a person, but also to preserve the integrity of the office that I occupy. I've decided to take this action not out of disrespect for the public protector as a crucial institution of our democracy, but in the expectation that the institution will ultimately be strengthened by an independent and impartial judicial review. My decision to seek a judicial review of this report should by no means be seen as a comment on the person who occupies the office, the competence or motives of the public protector. But this is motivated instead by a determination that the law should be applied correctly and consistently. I'm taking this action in the firm belief that the President of the Republic is not above the law, and nor is the public protector of the Republic also above the law. The public protector is equally bound by the law, and like the President, is answerable to the provisions of our Constitution. It is therefore appropriate that we place this matter before the courts and that the courts should be allowed to make a determination. In the meantime, we will continue with the urgent and critical tasks that are required to be embarked upon, to grow our economy, to mobilize investments into South Africa, to create jobs and to reduce poverty. We will not be detracted from the great responsibility 
we have to advance the interests and the needs of all the people of our country. Thank you.